Hi, good afternoon, parents and prospective students. Uh, I'm Daryl Tan, HOD for Humanities at Anglican High School. Uh, and uh, today we're here to share with you uh, on the critical and design thinking programs at AHS. At AHS, right, uh, as part of our school uh, vision, we believe in uh, cultivating our students to be honorable student leaders who learn for life and create value for others. So we are a school who believes, that believes in cultivating our talents and, allow, and allowing them to soar to greater heights. So with me today, uh, Ms. Karin Tam, subject head for social studies. And I was, we also have a group of students here today who will be sharing with you uh, on their experiences in the critical and design thinking programs at Anglican High School. We've got Esther and Ting Siang who are from Sec 3, as well as Hannah and Cindy who have just finished their O-levels and they will be sharing their perspectives with you. Now, critical thinking is a big part of the AHS curriculum, right? It is uh, embedded in all of our subjects, right? And uh, the programs that we're sharing with you today are some examples of the, the extended exposure that our students will have to critical thinking as well as design thinking. So the, the reason why it's such a big part of our curriculum is that we aim to meet uh, the students' abilities, interests and talents and aspirations. And this enables them to actually be future ready because critical thinking is really a big part of being ready for the future. And it helps them to be honorable leaders who make good decisions Right, and they, who can learn for life and to create value for others. So we'll be introducing you to some of these programs where students learn how to analyze their thinking. And they do so using the X model, the Anglican Critical Thinking Skills Model, which is based on the work of Dr. Richard Paul and Dr. Linda Elder right, in the field of critical thinking. Now, this actually sets up the different areas of critical thinking skills, right, um, such as the... Um, elements of thought, right? The universal intellectual standards, such as clarity, accuracy, and precision. And students use these tools to help themselves to evaluate and to analyze their own critical thinking. And in doing so, this helps them to improve their critical thinking skills as they get more and more exposure and, and they get more and more opportunities uh, to apply these different areas of critical thinking. Now, also very important is the area of design thinking. Now, design thinking is a critical area uh, at Anglican High School because uh, now this is um, now design thinking is mainly used in uh, our I score program, which uh, is design thinking uh, embedded into the food and consumer education as well as the uh, design and technology syllabus. So our students do FCE and DNT, but with a design thinking slant to it. So design thinking really is a very important process and it's commonly used. Right, and it's a process uh, in which we seek to understand the needs of the user through the empathize phase, right, where we conduct uh, observations and interviews in order to solve, in order to find out more about the problem, and, and thereafter we students are able to define the problem more clearly in the next stage, right, when they ask themselves uh, important questions uh, using the how might we kind of thinking. For example, how might we uh, help the elderly to improve their diets? Um, now, this actually then creates the, the foundation for students to ideate, to brainstorm for ideas. And once they have a pool of ideas, they're able to go into the prototype, prototyping and testing stage where, where they actually explore the different prototypes and try to come up with solutions uh, to the problems that they identified. Now, upon uh, the completion of that, they, they reflect uh, on the success of or, or the areas where they can improve in their prototypes. And, they also have a chance to communicate, right? The, 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 what they try to do for their prototypes. So, so this is a consistent um, practice across uh, the I-score one and two syllabus. Okay, so uh, our critical thinking programs not only include uh, I-score, but they also include the historical and geographical investigation, right? Uh, which are also essential parts of the the critical thinking because historical and geographical investigation allows students to be exposed to the X uh, framework on a very, um, a very, very pervasive level where it's a semester long program. Now thereafter, we also have um, at, at SEC2, right, where after the introduction of SEC1, at SEC2, we progressively increase the amount of challenge the students face uh, for uh, in these areas. Where, where the projects uh, become a little bit trickier and they, they have to, to think a lot harder and, and to you know, really uh, work in groups to, to, to 
conduct the investigation in certain areas. Now, at SEC3, we have uh, the experience program, which is the culminating performance where students are expected to demonstrate their understanding of critical thinking and design thinking uh, in, when, in the area of SS issues investigation, right? We will go into detail a little bit later on about some of these programs. Okay, so I score, right, as which I mentioned earlier, it stands for Innovative Thinker, Self-Directed Learner and Collaborative Researcher. Now, it is a curriculum innovation at Anglican High School because what we've done is that we've taken the food and consumer education and design and thinking syllabus and we have given it a design thinking slant, right? The, the whole uh, objective of doing this is to really equip the students with 21st century competencies such as communication, collaboration, and information literacy skills to get the students acquainted with design thinking and to apply it. And thereafter also to use the X framework uh, to help them to amplify their findings in, uh, for, the, for the different stages of the design thinking process. So these are some examples of the uh, programs at iScore. So at SEC1, they get to do packaging re redesign, health for life and Kickstarter at AHS at SEC2. Right, so uh, let me show you some examples of uh, some of the work that we've done. So one of the uh, areas of iScore 1 is the Health for Life uh, program, where students need to work in groups and apply design thinking to come up with a healthy and appetizing meal suitable for a person who is suffering from certain health conditions. So let's hear a little bit more from Hannah about her experiences. Hannah, please. Good afternoon, parents. I am Hannah, a graduated SEC4 student, and I will be sharing my experience during iScore. So in secondary one, we were tasked to, to, re, to redesign food packages and create an original dish suited to our target audience. So I was paired with a classmate, and together we brainstormed ideas for unique and nutritious dishes suited for those suffering from high cholesterol, which was our target audience. After weeks of researching and brainstorming, we planned a special diet with ingredients that will help lower um, our target audience's cholesterol levels. So using the design thinking process, we put together a list of food options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as to list the health benefits of each ingredient. Our teacher also guided and assisted us along the way, teaching us different food preparation skills. For example, how to cut the ingredients or how to cook different types of meat or other, or other forms of food. Afterwards, we also had to source our own ingredients and try the recipe out for ourselves. So my partner and I prepared our recipe of hot chicken with basmati rice along with a special salad on the side. And we practiced for many months trying to perfect the recipe. But after much trial and error, along with our teacher's guidance, we eventually managed to refine our recipe and prototype and, were able to, and was able to deliver a good dish. Our class then had to prepare our chosen dish under timed conditions and afterwards deliver a presentation introducing our dish and why we decided on our specific target audience. So for me, it was a very extremely enriching experience. Besides the cooking aspect, I was able to exercise empathy and while brainstorming to help curb such a real issue plaguing others, had to also step into the shoes of our target audience to understand how they feel. In addition, I learned to pay more attention to detail, especially during the food preparation process which involved many complicated and confusing steps and also improved my time management skills while working under these stressful conditions. Moreover, while researching for our presentation, I was able to exercise my critical thinking skills in drawing conclusions and connections between different ingredients and how they will all create a balanced diet for our target audience, So, which really served as a major eye-opener for me and I really enjoyed this experience. Okay, thanks so much, Hannah. Uh, let's move on to uh, iScore 2 now. Okay, now iScore 2 is, uh, is the SEC2 program and is uh, the design and technology syllabus infused with design thinking principles. And students also have the option of uh, applying uh, what they learn in the school's tech program. So they get to apply uh, 3D printing, coding, uh, and work to solve problems facing different segments of society. Right, thereafter, the students actually have to market their ideas and generate greater interest through the Kickstarter program, which you have seen an example of in the earlier video. So let's hear from Cindy about her experiences. Cindy, please. 
Good morning, parents. I'm Cindy, a graduated sec for student, and I will be sharing my experience about the design and technology aspect for iScore. For iScore held during secondary two, we were tasked to work in groups of three to design a product that will assist a certain target group that was assigned to us. This process stretched across five weeks, and I've gained important core values and skills, such as time management and communication skills, as well as accommodating other opinions and exercising good teamwork skills and perseverance. I had to hone my ability to step into my target audience's shoes and adapt to their needs so as to create a product most suitable for them. Usually, each class would focus more on the target group that we engaged with during our VIA sessions, and in my case, it was the elderly. My friends and I thus designed a relatively simple yet efficient fishing game for the elderly to improve their hand-eye coordination. We, we were taught how to use Microbit, a pocket-sized computer which taught us how to utilize software and hardware together and implement it into our product. We exercise teamwork and communication skills through working together, having to compromise our different ideas and create something all of us could agree on. Efficient time management skills were key as well, as we had to create a timetable stretching across five weeks, but with the task we should complete by their respective dates, so that we would be able to complete the product by the due date. This experience was clearly something fulfilling and one of the key stepping stones into shaping my character today allowing me to exercise these skills in my future endeavors. Hey, thanks so much, Cindy. Okay, now let's move on to the other aspects of the critical thinking and design thinking program. That's the area of historical and geographical investigations. Now, project work is really a very, very important part of the experience at Anglican High School because it does allow students to build up their co collaborative learning and research skills and, and to apply the historical geographical knowledge uh, across what is known as the inquiry-based learning cycle, which I will tell you more about uh, in the next slide. Now, really, the, the main benefit is that the, the students have a prolonged exposure to the critical thinking skills, uh, as well as a better, under, deep, better and deeper understanding of the subject matter. And they actually have a whole range of skills, uh, such as research skills, collaborative learning skills, that they can apply, that they can apply across different subject areas. So really, the, the process has been a very beneficial one, uh, which we will uh, find out more about in the next slide. Now, this is uh, the slide about geographical investigation. Now, the geographical investigation is, it, uh, revolves around the inquiry-based learning cycle, uh, which in the case of geography has got five stages, where students find out about uh, the issue, and then they are able to then uh, amplify their knowledge by doing research, analyzing the data that they gather, and thereafter to draw to draw conclusions. And all of this is uh, assisted by the X framework, uh, which they use to enrich their findings because they are able to think critically about the subject matter. So to uh, find out more, let's uh, talk, let's hear from Hannah about her GI experience. Hannah, please. For my GI experience, a group of five of us decided to work on the topic of housing and neighborhood. We then chose a specific neighborhood that we wanted to visit. So we decided to choose a neighborhood in Tampanese and along the course of a, of a few weeks had to come back to the same neighborhood to conduct surveys on the residents there. We crafted questionnaires on the residents to ask them about the facilities in the neighborhood, their favorite activities there, their reasons for staying in that neighborhood and to describe their environment. We then had to record the interview and our findings then transcript it accordingly. Afterwards, we collated our findings and derived conclusions from there about the general feelings about of the residents towards their neighborhood and what could be improved there. So through this experience, I learned how to think on the spot as we had to ask the residents questions aside from what we planned to get more answers, which helped hone my communication skills. As interviewing was a relatively new experience for me, I was initially slightly apprehensive but this experience allowed me to step out of my comfort zone and has greatly boosted my confidence. During the process of crafting the interview questions, we also had to consider the needs of the general population living in the neighborhood and had to think of questions that were direct yet, yet succinct. Despite this, we managed to craft well-rounded questions as we worked collectively together, which allowed me to understand the importance of teamwork and having a sense of accountability for our own work. This experience has definitely and truly been an interesting and fulfilling experience. Hey, thanks so much, Hannah. 
All right, uh, let's move on to the to historical investigation. Okay, um, so uh, historical and geographical investigation each run for one semester in SEC 1 and one semester in SEC 2. So for historical investigation, it is built around the inquiry-based learning cycle, uh, which, is, uh, which is then adapted to history. So it has uh, slightly different, it has six stages. Now, as you can see from the pictures, uh, that in pre-COVID times, we took students uh, for learning journeys to, in order to make it a more authentic experience and to uh, expose students to, to you know, the uh, historic, various historical sites like Kampong Glam or the Civic District. Uh, they also get a chance to go to museums to, uh, to get a, a feel of the locations and to do some research. Now thereafter, they will work together and they would apply the historical concepts that they learn, as well as the X framework to develop their findings about the historical issue uh, that they're looking into. So, so some of the possible topics are those that you see on the screen. Uh, Cindy will share her experiences uh, about HI with you. Cindy, please. For my historical investigation experience, I remember embarking on a trip to the National Museum of Singapore, where we spent a few hours looking through the different exhibits and having a hands-on experience with the audio booths and venturing through the three-dimensional displays relating to our history topic at the moment. As we were learning about the Japanese occupation during that year, our teachers had created a few projects to make sure our learning was more fun for us. In projects of five, we were assigned to a specific group to research about the war and create a presentation after. We lived through um, museum booklets, creating a storyline reflecting the experience of someone from our target group, hence getting a better understanding of how they felt during the war, which greatly aided us in our learning process. Through actively engaging with our history topic, we were able to develop a stronger understanding of it and excel in that subject. In addition, our cohort was split into two different groups, one visiting Kampong Glam, while the other visited Civic District and the Intercultural Museum, which helped us in understanding Singapore's history and the forthcomings better. We were given pamphlets and booklets to fill in, urging us to engage with our surroundings and actively participate in discussions during the journey, grasping new knowledge readily and strengthening our knowledge of Singapore. This experience was truly an eye-opener for me. As without it, I would not be so aware of Singapore's previous struggles and it allowed me to be more appreciative of Singapore's current state and not take it for granted. This also encouraged me to make a change and play a part in being a better citizen for the country. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Cindy. I'll now hand over to uh, Ms. Tam who will be taking us through uh, the experience program. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, you have heard about iScore 1 and 2, and you have actually seen our Kickstarter video um, earlier that was actually done up by one of our groups, uh, as well as you've heard about GI and HI earlier. So, all these skills uh, learned in lower sec will actually lead our students to the capstone program in secondary three, which is known as experience. So experience is actually the amalgamation of the design thinking as well as critical thinking skills acquired in lower secondary. So in the social studies curriculum, students are required to undergo uh, an issue investigation. So at AHS, we have actually taken the opportunity to improve on this and innovate by infusing the skills taught at lower secondary to enrich and deepen students' learning. So through experience, students will develop critical thinking skills as well as design thinking competencies as they journey through the different stages of the inquiry approach. So with the infusion of technology as well, such as microbit, 3D printing, coding, and more, uh, what we hope is that students can be future ready as they will become more capable of adapting to the global society. So experience also enables students to be better communicators and collaborative learners as they learn how to work with one another through the process. So what you see in the next slide uh, will be highlights of our experience program. Uh, we have Sparking Curiosity with uh, our Minister of State, Lo Yen Ling. We have a webinar session with uh, professors from SUTD to speak about design thinking and critique uh, our students' prototypes, as well as uh, some of our students' prototypes. Uh, you have the app design, you have video, and video uh, as well as website design. So uh, without further ado, let me invite Esther to share the process of experience as well as her reflections after going through the curriculum innovation this year. Esther? 
Hello everyone, I'm Esther and I'll be sharing my reflections and learning about experience. So my group mates and I first started off by crafting our own inquiry question after identifying some problems that we face in society and deciding on one area to focus on. After which we did up surveys, which we sent to those in our target age group. And in my group's case, it was the youth. We then analyzed the data and responses that we received. And through ideation, we created a prototype that would aid in solving the issue and finally wrote a proposal paper summarizing our work and the six month long process. So my group's vision was to make Singapore a more inclusive society for people with disabilities. And through gathering data, we found out that Singaporeans generally lack understanding of those with disabilities and do not know what they can do to help. Some even jumping to conclusions, generating stereotypes, or even discriminating against people with disabilities without getting to know them beforehand. Hence, we decided to design a website and also create an Instagram account with a series of posts introducing mental disabilities to the public and giving them some suggestions on what they can do if they encounter a person with disabilities who needs assistance. Through this experience, my group mates and I learned how to get out of our comfort zone and develop empathy for the end users, be willing and courageous to try new things or see things differently, work together as a team and encourage one another while we work on our prototype and policy paper. While it was not easy, it was extremely rewarding seeing all of our hard work and these seemingly insignificant or unimportant stages like conducting research slowly come together and play their part in making this project and experience a fruitful one. Thank you, Esther. So moving on, we also have Ting Xiang who will be sharing a little bit more about his reflections for experience as well. Hi, I'm Ting Xiang and I'll be sharing my reflections for my experience project today. Like what Esther had mentioned, my groupmates and I embarked on an issue investigation where we tackled the social, economic and political challenges that Singapore may face in the near future. We had to generate a solution culminating in a policy proposal or a prototype. From this experience, I've truly learned a lot as my assumptions were challenged and I saw the challenges from many perspectives, such as the government's perspective, the perspective of businesses, individuals, and so on. This is beneficial because it's important to be aware of the current affairs of our country and see things from different points of view. I was also able to interact with my group mates when discussing and coming up with the solution to our issue at hand, which allowed me to better my communication and teamwork skills, which I believe are vital skills needed for the future when we have to go to work. To conclude, I think that this was an amazing opportunity that AHS has offered me and every other student that enrolls in AHS. Thank you, Jin Xiang. So what you have seen are uh, just uh, some glimpse. It's actually a glimpse of our critical thinking and design thinking programs at AHS. So we're opening it up to uh, for Q&A. So if you do have questions, uh, just unmute and um, you can actually ask questions for Mr. Tan, myself, or even the students. We're happy to take your questions. Any questions? Uh, you can also use the chat function to uh, highlight your questions if you have any. Hi for the guest who just came in. Uh, we have actually gone through the critical thinking and design thinking key programs at AHS, so we're on to the Q&A segment now. Uh, if you do have questions for either the teachers or the students, you may unmute and uh, share your question, or you may also type your question on the, group, on, on the chat, okay?
Okay, thank you, Alicia. There's a question from Alicia. Hi, may we check if students is, uh, is supposed to choose only of the programs? I'm assuming you are actually asking if students are supposed to be choosing the programs. Uh, no, these are actually um, uh, imbued in our curriculum. So uh, for set one and two, I score one and two is actually um, compulsory as well as for set three, you have experience, uh, GI, HI, a geographical investigation and historical investigation is actually also within curriculum in geography and history at lower secondary. Okay, I hope I've answered your question. Are there any more questions? Welcome. Are there any other questions? We're happy to take your questions. Okay, so if there are no other questions, thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you next year. <laughs> all right, so if you do have questions, uh, just feel free to keep them uh, on the chat. Okay, we'll end the session. All right, thank you everyone. Oh, sorry, we do have the feedback uh, QR code. So if you... Uh, uh, we also have the link on the chat. So if you are able to, uh, please help us fill in the feedback for us. Your feedback is actually very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We will end the session now. Have a great afternoon.